is the fighting pride of Liverpool. He is finishing people in ways that we have never seen before. We are watching a star be born right now. This man, he can do it all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shamrock. I think growing up I was a bit of a I was a bit of a boisterous kid, I was a bit naughty, but my earliest memories, my me mum, my dad, my brothers. Yeah, early memories are quite quite good, yeah. We were all together as a family. And then obviously as time went on, my mum and dad got divorced. And that's when we went to live with my mum alone. She raised three of us by herself. We moved around quite a lot. Growing up, obviously, on council estates, there's not much positive role models. And being surrounded by people who were committing crime, and you know the criminals, because they got the big car, but they've never worked a day in their life. They've got the money, the jewelry. When you're young, you don't, under really, you don't truly understand what's going on. You just see people with nice things, and you know, oh, I want that. So I would always look up to them, and I wanted to be like them. And I think um, that's where it started. Early ages as a teen, at school weren't really for me. I can remember being like 12, 13 years of age and getting up to no good. I'm selling weed on the estate and that. Um, I'm starting to make a little bit of money. I'm coming to school and I'm thinking, what do I need school for? I'm already making money. My me, me school teacher's pulling up to school in a in a Volvo Polo, and I'm thinking he hasn't got no money. I'm making more money than he is, and he's teaching school. Why do I need to listen to him? And that was kind of my mentality at that point. Like oh, I don't need this. Schools full of schools for chumps. Schools for people who go and work in McDonald's or something. I'm carrying knives every day. I'm, I'm getting chased by police every day. I'm selling weed. I, I ended up leaving that school and going to a college to study horticulture. I wanted to do it for my mum more than anything because I know she didn't want to see me end up like the rest of my family who maybe went down the wrong path, my dad and that, whatever, let's say. I stopped selling weed. I'm getting paid by the government now. I'm on like welfare, let's say, because I'm studying. And I can remember like Police used to kick the door off all the time and search the house, looking for drugs or looking for whatever, guns, knives, whatever. And I can remember I'm coming to the college one day and um, I'm sitting in the classroom and the, the teachers are like, c c come outside, um, the principal wants to speak to you. And as I've come out the classroom, all police just jumped on me and they've all twisted me up, arrested me. Got into the principal's office and spoke to the principal, and the principal's like, "You can't come here no more." We spoke to the police, and the police said that you, you you're going, you're, you've been selling Class A drugs to the students. You sell crack. You're in a gang. You've got guns. You know. And I was like, at that point in my life, I really did try and like apply myself. I stopped doing everything I was doing, and I was going to that college. It was hard because now I'm not making that same that same money. Now I'm just living off the government. And I got kicked out of that college. And then I feel like that was like a real big turning point in my life where I thought, you know what? If they, if they want me to be that guy, I'll be that guy. And I feel like that's when I started doing everything. At 16, 17, 18, now things just start getting bigger and bigger. I'm making more money, I'm doing more things. And then that's when I got the main crime that I was wanted for at the time, the aggravated burglary, which, funnily enough, was the crime that I didn't commit. I might have been a drug dealer, I might have been doing no good and having fights in the streets and whatever, but I was never a house robber, I was never a burglar. So I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm about on the streets. One day I get caught and I've been arrested. I'm walking home from the police station, it's got to be 11 at night. 
As I'm walking home from the police station, the police pull me over again to stop and search me. And I remember I pulled out my letter from the police to say I've just been bailed from the police station. And they just drove off. As they drove off, my phone rang. I've answered it. Hello. It's me solicitor. I'm like, what's up? Like, I'm thinking, what does she want? I've already been bailed. What, what's up? And she's like, the police have made a mistake. They weren't meant to bail you. They want to remind you into custody. Can you come back? So then that's when I've been like, tell them I'll come back first thing in the morning. It's too late now. I've got no transport, blah, blah, blah. I've made the decision immediately to run. After everything I've been through with them police, like kicking my door off, I didn't believe that they were going to do right by me. And that's why I decided to run, because I thought, there's no way I'm sitting in jail for a crime that I haven't committed. Being young, being dumb, I ran. And I probably shouldn't have, but I'm glad I did, because if I did never run, I would have never found martial arts. I woke up first thing in the morning, like 5, 6 a.m., because I was a bit paranoid, thinking they might come to my house for me. I've applied for a passport, got my passport back that day. I've then got the train from Liverpool Lime Street to London. When I went to get on the train to France on the Eurostar, there was two queues. There was a man and a woman, and I can remember they were looking at the passports and scanning them. And I remember I'm sweating. I'm thinking, oh my God, they're going to check my passport. They're going to scan it. Something's going to come back that I'm wanted. I'm going to get arrested. And I remember this queue was moving quicker. So I've changed into this queue. And as I gave my passport to the woman, she just went, thanks. She didn't even scan it. And I just got straight on the Eurostar. And I'm thinking, what? Now, as I'm on the, the, the Eurostar, for some reason, I thought we were going to stop at a border and get a passport check. So I'm still sweating on the train thinking, oh, I still haven't made it. And then, OK, we're at France. I got off the train and I'm like, no border checks, no nothing. It was that easy. I thought, wow. Honestly, when I first left, I didn't think I was going to make it past London, never mind France and Thailand. But in my mind, I just thought, fuck the police. I want to make their job as hard as possible. From France, I flew to Dubai, from Dubai to Bangkok, and then I flew to Koh Samui. So the fact that I lasted nine months in Koh Samui, after then I thought, I don't think these are coming for me here. I think the coast is clear. And that's when I decided to go to Malaysia. I'm walking down the street in Malaysia. I see a sign that says Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try this. In my mind, when I first went to that class, I thought in my head, I'm going to batter everyone. I've had fights before, I'm in shape, I lift weights, I play footy every day. Everyone's a bit smaller. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a few big guys, but it's not the same, do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to smash everyone here. My coach put me to roll. And I'm getting absolutely battered by everyone, lad. I was getting choked out by women, by kids. I, ro I rolled with a 12-year-old. And I just remember he was doing all mad gi chokes and wrapping his lapel around me. I'm getting choked and I'm like, one sec, lad, give a sec, give a sec. <laughs> and I remember at the end, the coach was like, do you want to roll? So I rolled with the coach. Straight away, he's put me in a triangle. And I'm like, I've never, I didn't even know what a triangle was. I'm like, what's this? Next minute, I can feel it getting tight and I'm starting to get choked out. I thought, oh, I know how to get out of this. Picked them up. Boom. Slammed them. Ah, oh, biggest mistake I could have made. Biggest mistake I could have made. His face is just instantly he's fuming. Now, rather than being all nice with me, he's submitting me. And when I'm going tap, 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 he's holding it for a little second longer, letting it go and carrying on. It wasn't even like, stop, reset. Shake hands, let's go. Tap, 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 tap. He must have tapped me out in a five minute roll about 40 times. I don't know what that was. I don't know what the fuck just happened to me, but I need to learn that. I wanna, whatever just happened to me, I wanna be able to do that to other people.
now I've got the bug to compete. So now I'm competing, competing, competing. I'm doing all these competitions. I'm beating everyone. I've slowly started to beat everyone in the country. Now I'm going outside and I'm competing internationally. I'm winning competitions in Singapore, whatever. I went to the World Championships and represented Great Britain while I was on the run. Like, I did a lot of things that I never thought I'd do at that point. And I remember coming back to Malaysia and Bruno's like, He's like, look, I think you should do this MMA tournament coming up. That's when I kind of started training MMA. I went to my first fight. Second fight, and I'm just now starting to take people down and submit people in MMA. And I remember thinking, like, it's more dangerous. But when I take these people down, they don't really know what to do on the floor, like jujitsu guys. So I was like, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> so I'm going competition, competition. I'm, I, I got all the way to the final. Now I'm in the final. How my gym owner has gone to the British Embassy on my behalf. And I don't know how he done it, but he did. He got a letter from the British Embassy to say, Shaquem can compete and he's not wanted. Don't know how, but he did. He's give it to the guy. The guy let me fight. Make some noise. The Queen Rock! Check that leg kick. Nice combo. Nice knee. And Nasri with the tie plum. Looking for dominance. Oh, nice takedown. It's a very high. I want to go home, but I can't. I've probably done all I can do in Southeast Asia. I thought Europe's where I need to be. I need to get on shows in Europe. I thought, where can I go? That's like Liverpool, but isn't Liverpool, and the people are the same. I'm going to Dublin. I've went down to Dublin Combat Academy. I told them from day one, I said, look, I'm on the run. I did used to be a criminal, but I'm not no more. This is the crime I was wanted for. I'm, I am wanted for. I didn't commit it, though, lad. And he was like, cool. Look, as long as you're here and you're training, as long as you're doing the right thing, we're happy to have you here. So, I'm in Dublin Combat Academy. I'm doing striking full time now. I'm just, I'm, I'm just improving my striking every day. A fight come up on the horizon. I've been offered a world title fight in, um, in Belfast. Belfast is Northern Ireland, which is UK territory. So now I had to weigh the risks, and I thought, you know what? I'm not running, I'm not hiding. I've made it eight years, nine years at this point. If they get me, they get me. So I went to Belfast. Hard squeeze. I won me fight. Beautiful jiu-jitsu by Shamrock. I won the belt. My first ever professional title. And now that I've won it, 
This is when all the little snakes start coming out the woodwork, all these fake profiles on Instagram, people sharing me mugshots, people were commenting under the promotions pictures of me with the title, he's a, he's a robber, he's a scumbag, he's a criminal, so forth. I know this is a bigger risk going back to defend it, but I don't care. I went back to defend me belt. Take down with Shamrock, look at the end of two hooks in, look at that level straight away, but Kelly explodes and gets out. It was the first fight me mum ever come to watch me. Me mum come over with me little brother. I'm gonna oh, that left, him. that hit landed on the tempo. And we see Kelly oh, the stretch it, oh. Shamrock is out! We have a new champion! I got knocked out. And then I got arrested. <laughs> the Scouse police flew me straight back to Liverpool, and then I went from training and fighting straight to jail. I was straight into Walton Jail. I got remanded into custody. They refused to give me bail. Um, when I went to court, they said, I've traveled the world on fake passports, and that's why they shouldn't give me bail, because I'll run. I traveled the world on my own passport. I never needed to use no one else's. It's not their fault, they're stupid, but it is what it is. I ended up doing six months in Walton. It wasn't nice, it wasn't fun. I would never glamorize it. I would never recommend anyone goes there. It was the shittest time of my life. But it was a, something that I needed to go through to get to where I am now. I've gone to court. I got a not guilty. I've got freed. I'm a free man. I'm back home in Liverpool. And the first place I wanted to come to was next gen. My first session in next gen, I'm training with Paddy, I'm training with Molly, I'm here, it was boss lad. I threw up everywhere in the toilet, <laughs> being out of shape from jail, but I was loving it lad. And I just committed myself to the gym every day. I ended up winning two world titles for the gym and now ultimately getting signed by Octagon and here, here I am, do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter who I'm fighting. He's just a body. It can be whoever. I don't see a person anymore. It's not a game. It's not fun. It's a fight to the death. And if I don't kill him, he's going to kill me in front of my family. And that's not happening. If the referee don't jump in, I don't give a fuck. I'm not stopping. There's no mercy. No, I'm there to take his head off. I'm going to go on to be the biggest thing on Octagon. I'll take the lightweight belt, I'll take the featherweight belt, and trust me, people are gonna remember my name. But my biggest dream one day is to have like my own place where maybe I can teach kids from unfortunate backgrounds, bring them in, teach them martial arts, keep them off the streets. Because I know that's what I needed when I was a kid, I was a little swat. But I know if I had this when I was a kid, I would have loved it. My role models were fucking big gangbangers on the corner, but now we do have that. So now it's our job as them people to represent for this city and show like, nah, you don't need to do that, boys. You can make money doing this. You can better your life doing this. And ultimately, that's my goal. All the people who shut the door on me, everyone who hated. You want to know me now? You want to know me now? You couldn't have written a better ending. But for me, it's just the beginning. And... Octagon is the platform for me to showcase what I can do.